Travis here lost over 100 pounds from off all prescription uh, uh, go go canour. Did I say that right? Go canour or go canour? It's hard, ain't it? <laughs> oh, it's good to have you. I've lost over 100 pounds on the program. Come off all prescription medications. It's been the honor, and privilege of a lifetime to have been now teaching this. Uh, really by accident, I guess God orders our steps so it wasn't an accident. We've been teaching this for about 20 years, have seen tens and tens of thousands of transformations, and I hope that we all continue to just bless the name of the Lord for what God is doing in our lives. Uh, this program has helped me overcome so much, not just what I see in the mirror, but what goes on in here. So we just want to welcome you. Hope you make some friends today. Make sure you uh, set the chat to everyone, not just all panelists and attendees, or excuse me, not to just panelists, uh, but to everyone. You want everybody to be able to, to see your comments. If you don't want somebody to see a question that you've got to ask, I'll try to remember to keep it anonymous. If you click the Q&A button, just click that Q&A button, feel free to ask questions, and I'll do my best to get it answered if I were to miss something. Uh, just, just keep copying and pasting. I'll eventually catch it and get it answered. This is a, a session that's really uh, uh, hosted live so that we can help our folks in, at the 11 o'clock hour understand food combinations and meal ideas uh, for you to, to utilize during your new lifestyle. Um, we also do a, do a lot of Q&A here at 12, 12 o'clock p.m. lunchtime today, we'll do Q&A for the full hour. So uh, anything that you have, questions that you have that are a little more than, it, than the beginner type questions, be better to wait till the noon hour and ask those questions. But she, you can go ahead and ask whatever, you know, if it's something that's going to take a lot of unpacking, then we might wait till later. But this is 11 o'clock. I consider right now one of, one of our beginner classes. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is earn that fast track badge. Okay, soon as soon as you get uh, involved with the program, you want to earn that fast track badge. That's going to help you get off to a good start. It's going to allow these support sessions to be more helpful and meaningful because you'll understand the terms better. So make sure you watch your fast track videos. We've got three types of members here today. We've got free community members. We are a ministry first and foremost. Uh, we've also got our lifetime members and we've got our partners. So if you're a lifetime member or a partner, Sasha and I want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, it's, it's only with your help and by God's grace that we're able to do what, what we do at the levels we do it. As I say, every class, I'd be really limited uh, to, my, to my minimal reach if it weren't for the Shibola family. I couldn't help but so many people. I wouldn't have a team. And I really believe obesity is one of the worst epidemics that, that we're facing. Uh, it gets overlooked because we're trying to normalize it. And consumerism is, uh, you know, they don't have any vested interest in you being healthy. They're trying to get you to consume more products. And spend more money and we just have a culture uh, that at least from the, the physical health standpoint is really deteriorating fast. And I want to be, I want to help. I want to help people uh, modify their lifestyle, utilize the Shibola lifestyle, personalize it at, for themselves as they go forward, lose that weight and keep it off forever. That, that's my goal. And uh, we could not do it without, the uh, lifetime members and partners. So thank you so much. Peggy says, I got my fast track badge and I also just got my 10 pound badge yesterday. Congratulations. That's great news, Peggy. You're off to a good momentous start. Momentum is such a major part of transformation. Got to get that momentum. All right, y'all. On the flip side, if you got momentum in the wrong direction, it's real easy to get it back in the right direction. You just have a perfect day. That's all you got to do. So I know some of you got to go. Uh, you, you, have, you, you can't stay but 10 or 15 minutes. So do you have any questions for me before I get into today's lesson? 
Any questions for those that are going to have to split early? All right, let's get into the lifestyle. Hell, Nikki says, help create a meal plan for Easter. I got that resolved for you already. Get that mentor appointment, Nikki. <laughs> that would be about an hour class, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's, it's easy to do. You either take a holiday. One of the things I, I want to say when it comes to Easter, stay with me a minute. And I see another question too. Stay with me. When it comes to Easter, when it comes to Christmas, why do folks try to have perfect days on those days? And again, think about this. For those of you that are new, we have two types of days. We have perfect days and holidays. How many perfect days do I need to have in a month to lose weight fast and efficiently? We got two types of days, perfect and some definitions that we meet, and that's how we have a perfect day. And then we have holidays. Now, I'm, I'm going to talk about Easter and having a perfect meal, but I, I just want to talk to you, man. I want to talk sensible, right? So you, if you have 24 to 25 perfect days, no more than what we call six holidays in a month, you're going to lose body fat efficiently as assuming, assuming that you meet the definition of a perfect day. My definition, not your definition. We don't have okay days here. The Bible says, I wish that were cold or hot, but thou art lukewarm, therefore I spew thee out of my mouth. It's either right or it's wrong. If I so much as lick the cheese dust off a Dorito, that's a holiday, but I get six a month, and I feel like that's a fair number. God's, you know, it took me a long time to end up over 300 pounds. Less than six months of living this lifestyle, dropped that 100 pounds, come off all prescription medications, and I did it with six holidays or less. I thought that was the deal of the century, that I could eat what I wanted six days a month, and as long as all my other days were perfect, I could get rid of that old body fat once and for all. Now, when you get into maintenance, how many holidays can I have, folks? When I get into maintenance. Now, really let this sink in today. I don't know that it sinks in. People think this is just a, a look. They just want a meal plan, right? Give me, Just tell me what to eat. The real power, now I'm talking to members who've been here for a while, and maybe you've had a little relapse too. The real power of the program is in meeting the definition of a perfect day. Once you get into maintenance, and you'll get there fast, if you'll just do what you're supposed to be doing, you'll get there fast. If you get 12 holidays a month, all you got to do is have 18 to 19 perfect days. Y'all think about this for a minute. Is that, not, is that not worth fighting for? You get to put this food issue behind you forevermore. Earn that fast track badge and then put this issue behind you, right? This is a beautiful thing that I can literally, my life now, y'all, now I, I do have to, uh, every once in a while, I got to drop it like it's hot. I have a, for, for those of you that you're going to get to maintenance, Here's how I do it. I think women should use five pounds. Men should use 10. I get about a 10-pound variance. So if my ideal weight is 195, if I hit 206, oh, man, I treat that 10 pounds I've put on like it's 100 because 10 is a lot easier to lose with massive action than 100. If you, just, if you put on weight, I'm digressing a little bit, but if you put on weight, and, and you're like, well, it's just 10. I can get it off fairly easy. Next thing you know, it's going to be 30. Has that happened to anybody? And the next thing you know, it's going to be 100. And then the next thing you know, it's going to be 200. So I, I treat, when I finally get up 10 pounds over my ideal weight, boy, I drop it like it's hot. But for the most part now during the year, my lifestyle looks like this. Perfect day, perfect day. Today will be a perfect day, okay? And then Wednesday, a perfect day, and Thursday, a perfect day. Now, if I didn't have one of these days perfect, I'm going to make up for it over here while I'm in maintenance. But let's say I, I follow my lifestyle where I've modified Shibola for myself. 
So I've got four perfect days, and then I have a hollow meal on Friday night, a hollow meal on Saturday, and a hollow meal on Sunday. Four days on, three days off in maintenance, and I'm able, not only am I able to stay in my ideal weight range, I have to stop losing weight from time to time because I get too low. All right? So this is the power. You're building a powerful, powerful metabolism. Now, when you get started, we can't do that if we want to lose body fat efficiently. But what we can do is pick out a Friday or Saturday night. Here's what I recommend. Another teaching point. I, I recommend this. I recommend that you, you stay perfect. Keep your eyes on your goal. You stay perfect, and then either Friday night or Saturday night, Saturday night have a hollow meal. Only one. I thought we got more, but stay with me. We're always going to have snacksidents. So I pick out one weekend. I'm always back on Sunday. I decided I'm going to work for the Lord on Sunday, and part of how I work for the Lord, and this is how I do it in my childlike heart, part of my work for the Lord is I eat unto the Lord, and what better day? than to eat under the Lord on Sunday. Now, some of you may want to pick Sunday to be your hollow meal because you eat out with the church people, and that's fine. But here, I'm doing this kind of thing, right? And, and what happens is I have one hollow meal every week for four weeks, and that leaves me with two snacks days. And it's not hard to have perfect days. They're really enjoyable, okay? So here's my question. Back to Easter. Why... Would you want not not we're going I'm gonna help. I'm talking to us all of us. Why do we want to try to have a perfect day on Easter? Our lifestyle should be about also enjoying uh food and family for celebratory reasons. Why, unless it's easy for you to have a perfect day on Easter? For me, it's an easy now. I don't like to eat off plan. So on Easter Day, I'd rather save it for date night. You know, I'll have, uh, you know, some ham, some turnip greens, whatever. I'll be fine. So you can have a perfect day. I can put you together an Easter menu. You, you're just not going to get to eat granny's uh, macaroni and cheese. Or what? It, why would we do that to ourselves when we get holidays? That's what the holidays are for. I can't tell you how many people, they be, it's like kind of when we were in college, anybody ever delay writing their, their term paper or anything? Wait till the last minute. Did anybody ever do that? You got a paper you got to write, and you wait till the last minute. I have not figured out why when people haven't been doing good day after day, then all of a sudden when they get ready to go on vacation or have Easter or, or Christmas, they're like, how do I eat right on those days? We're, we're making, again, I'm talking universally, we're making this lifestyle so much more difficult than it has to be. In that we are allowed to enjoy our family and food. Here is the mission of Shibola. Stop being enslaved by food. Paul said, I will, I have, he says, I have liberty. I am free. I am free. So many of us are white knuckling this program. You're doing it just out of sheer grit and determination even though you don't want to do it does that sound like anybody about i gotta lose weight so i'm gonna do it i'm gonna bear down i'm even gonna have a perfect day on easter right your, your hands are all clenched up and you're just fighting this thing every day as hard as you can and you keep slipping up you're like why am i slipping up i just quit because i can't ki listen the minute you go this is a i'm like the apostle paul i have liberty i can eat whatever i want he, God loves me. Everybody say this with me. I, come on now, I am loving awareness. I love everything and everyone that I'm aware of. I love myself. And I ain't got to do nothing. I've been set free by the, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. I am beautiful just how I am. I'm 330 pounds. That's what I was. And I'm beautiful. God loves me. I have just decided that I want all of my inheritance. I want all of that that God's got for me. And if I'm living in an unhealthy temple that I don't have to live in, then I'm not going to be able to be at my, my all that I can be for God. I'm not going to be able to be all that I can be. And in fact, I'm going to miss out on a lot of life. I ain't missing out on no food. I'm going to miss out on a lot of life. 
So I've decided I'm going to love myself where I'm at, and I've decided I'm going to get started, and I am not going to hate the process. Be honest now. I'm not going to yell at you. I don't know why I'm going on a rant. But how many of you, you really love the idea of losing weight? Show of hands. You love the idea of losing weight and what that would mean for your life, but you hate the process. Do I have anybody in that? Let's turn this into a behavioral modification class. Anybody that hates, just hates the process of losing weight. You just wish you could wake up and be there and you didn't have to do anything. You just could wake up and it be there because you know how much that would mean to your life. And you're going through the process begrudgingly. Like, oh, I don't really. I'm not talking about, you, you, I'm not saying you're down on Shibboleth. I don't think you're down on Shibboleth at all. I, I'm just saying you just want the goal and then you're missing out on the lifestyle. This is a lifestyle. This is a character building lifestyle. This is a worshipful lifestyle. What do you mean worshipful? We worship Jesus by what we put in our mouths. Did y'all know that? That's in the Bible. I didn't make it up. Did anybody know that? We worship Jesus by what we let get in our mind. We worship Jesus by the words that come out of our mouth. We worship Jesus by every bite that we eat. The Bible says whatever you eat, whatever you drink, do it all for the glory of God. So if we'll eat breakfast for the Father, lunch for the Son, dinner for the Holy Spirit, it is also okay to take off and have a holiday. That's part of the fun. But Brother Travis, I'm so afraid. Listen, I'm so afraid. How many of you are this? I'm so afraid that if I take a day off, then I won't be able to get back on the plane. Anybody feel that way? Like if I if I, I've had nothing but perfect days and if I have a holiday, then I know that I won't get back on the plane and I just don't want to have a holiday. Do I have anybody in that state? Because I don't want to lose my, I'm so afraid I, I can't get back on the plan. Now, now think about what you're saying. There's going to come a day that you, you have a holiday the best you do. You're going to have a holiday. Then you're going to be faced with that then. Why not go on and face your fear, have a perfect week this week, and have a, a great Easter meal with your family and enjoy that. Now, if you want, to have a perfect Easter, what I would recommend on a perfect Easter is if you're eating three meals a day, which I don't anymore, but that's what we teach, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you're doing that, then what we're looking at for Easter, if you want to be perfect, is one, uh, you might, probably not going to have shellfish for breakfast, but one plus two, four plus two, this is your best option. So everywhere you go, they're going to have ham or turkey or something you can have. But if you decide to have a perfect day, you can't have dressing unless you pull up in the library and make your own Shibboleth approved dressing. And by the way, it's really good. I like it. It ain't as good as Mama Jackson's. But if I was trying to have a perfect day, that dressing in the library, uh, the uh, uh, Shibboleth approved dressing is pretty good. And you can make Shibboleth approved mac and cheese. There's ways for you to do this. I'm assuming you already know how to do that. So if you're cooking at home, you need to prepare you some recipes that you'll eat while everybody else eats whatever they bring or want to eat. Okay. But if you're at somebody else's house, you've got a decision to make. Is this going to be a perfect day or a holiday? And hopefully they have turkey or ham and some green beans because that's what you're going to be resigned to. Now, can you do that? How many of you can do that? You want to have an Easter and you want it to be perfect and you're going to have uh, either turkey or ham and green beans. You're going to white knuckle it. If you, you can do it. And actually, I probably will anyway because I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to eat some good old food at home. Just throwing things out there for y'all to think. I don't want you feeling so strapped in. You know what I mean? How about sweet potatoes? Well, let's let's talk about sweet potatoes. What category are sweet potato, everyone? I need some of my experienced members to help me out here. Yeah, it's a category three. So category three, category three is a sweet potato. We learned this in the fast track system, okay? 
Now, let's talk about that sweet potato. If I eat that sweet potato by itself and I'm trying to lose weight, what happens? Category three, yep. So if I eat it by itself, it's got fiber in it. So it's not a, it's not a real fast digesting carbohydrate. It's kind of slow digesting. That's a good thing. Elevates our blood sugar. Pancreas has to release insulin to regulate the blood sugar. So this sweet potato, it causes the fat bus. Let's take a look at this food combination here. Don't, don't forget, if y'all are struggling with your meal plan, I got a lot of that over the weekend. People didn't know what to eat, and, and you can get a mentor appointment, and you can get a meal plan. You can generate meal ideas from the meal plan generator online. Or you can get a mentor appointment, and them ladies are great to help, right? No excuses. We've, we've looked under every rock for every solution that there is, and we found a solution for every reasonable person. There's mentoring, meal plans. You generate them yourself. You can get somebody to work with you. I don't know anybody else that does that stuff. So thankful for our team members, all right? So we got a Category 3 sweet potato. How, how much sweet potato should we limit ourselves to uh, in, in uh, the weight loss mode. Does anybody know? About a quarter cup. And then later we can go up to a half a cup. A quarter cup up to a half cup. Think of it this way. A quarter cup weight loss, half a cup maintenance. So somewhere in between there, okay? And it's category three, and it's provoked the fat bus if I eat it by itself. I've got to put other foods with it. If I look at my combination chart, what else can I have with a category three? If I want to make it work in a meal. So I've got my meal, I've got my portion plate, my six to eight inch plate. I've got my sweet potato, some cinnamon, a little zero calorie butter spray. So could I have chicken? What's something that we, what, what's something that we would have traditionally on Easter? Let's talk about a ham, right? What if I had a fatty ham? Not a category one ham, but a fatty ham that was a category four, and then I had some green beans, okay? So here I've got a category four ham. I know y'all can't read my writing. I'll just, just hear what I got to say. So I've got a category four ham, category three sweet potato, category two green beans. Does that combination work? No, Jennifer, you're spot on. It doesn't. Here's why. So when I eat that fatty ham, the ham's being broken down, right? It's being broken down. I get a lot of blood flow to the digestive system. The ham's being broken down. The protein part is it positive. It's good for me. That's fantastic. That's a, that's a pro. That's a benefit. Because now I'm going to preserve my muscle and further build my metabolism. But this fatty ham has got a lot of long chain triglycerides in it. Let's liken that to a long candle wick. And when I consume that ham, my body's already in efficient fat burning mode if this is my first holiday. And, and so I come out of fat burning and my body's got an energy source right here. It's got a, the energy source from the potato and the energy source from these long chain triglycerides that are in the form of fat. The sweet potato also boosts my blood sugar and my pancreas releases insulin, albeit because of all this fiber and good stuff we put on the plate, it's going to be slow. We already benefited ourselves by knowing even a little bit about food combining, but we potentially are going to get a little too much fat bus too fast and we've got all this fat we've ingested. So the fat bus comes and sucks all, sucks all that fat up into like, Visualize the fat bus as insulin. Uh, visualize it like a syringe. It pulls it up, and now it's looking for my butt. It's, it's going to inject it. So it picks all these up, and the fat bus does what it does. It stores fat, and it, boom, it plants it on our butt. See, we're eating in these wrong combinations, and our butt, just mine anyway, I don't know about your butt, my butt just got bigger and bigger and bigger because I didn't understand food combining. Right? So let's, let's take this off now. Let, let's just take this off and let's fix this problem. We've got a solution. 
Do, are we willing to give up our tater? No, that's what I'm craving. Since I'm not willing to give it up, now, if I gave the potato up, could I have the ham and green beans and some squash? Yeah, I could do that. But I, I don't want to give up my potato in this case. So I'm going to keep my potato. And what have I got to get rid of, everybody? If I want the potato, I just give up the ham. Now, what can I replace? Somebody said chicken breast. If you know for sure it's a lean ham, which is rare, you could do that. Uh, most time, a ham's going to be a category four. Could I put some ribs here? Could I put some baby back, baby back, baby back ribs? Could I do that? No, we don't want to put no ribs there. Could I put some chicken wings? Can I do chicken wings? No. Could I do boar's head lean ham? Could I do it, get it cut a little thicker? Yeah, I could do category one ham. Category one ham. Now, what's the difference? What changed? Well, this time I'm having a lean ham. So I got a lot less fat. I'm still getting the provocation of the fat bus, but while the fat bus, bus is coming, remember, I'm already in EFB. I've had two perfect days. This fat here, even if it could be stored, is probably going to be used up so quick that it's just going to dissipate its heat and go away. Isn't that amazing? that you can do this with everything, every food. It's like I may not get ham, sweet potato, and green beans. If I want the potato, I got to give up the ham for a leaner meat. If, I, if I'm willing to give up the potato, I get extra category two veggies. I like either one. So with, with before Shibboleth, I love the food and I gain weight. With Shibboleth, I can love the food and lose weight. It's just little pivots in how you're thinking. Did I miss any other questions or comments? Lean protein with that potato and then add your fibrous carb. Yes, ma'am. Some hams like boars, some boars head hams lean enough. Jessica says butternut squash is very comparable to sweet potato. And that's it. Let me ask you this. If you traded out a good recipe of butternut squash, mock sweet potato, would that be better for weight loss than the sweet potato or not as good? Yep, Jody, you could put a little fat-free cheese on that potato or uh, you could put a full portion of uh, fat-free cheese on the potato and use it as a one. You'd still have to have a two. All restaurant beef is going to count as a category four. Anytime we eat it at a restaurant, since we don't know how lean it is, we can only do that uh, when we do our shopping at the grocery store. We don't know about a restaurant, so we treat, during the weight loss mode, we treat all meat that's unbreaded as a category four. That's our restaurant uh, rule. Karen asked, uh, can you do pinto beans, cabbage, and sweet potatoes? Let me ask the group. So we've got pinto beans is a category six. Cabbage is a two. Sweet potato is a three. Can I do a six, two, and three, everyone? Jennifer, how do you know if a hamburger is lean enough to eat? Well, your chili recipe that you're asking about, if it's in the library, it's approved. If you're eating a chili recipe somewhere else, then uh, you, you're eating somebody else's recipe, then most likely you'd have to call it a holiday unless you, you've got access to the recipe and you can show it to us. Um, so that, that's the only downside there. If you, if you eat chili at somebody's house, it's probably not going to be approved so if you make it at home you use one of the chili recipes how do you know if a hamburger will process meat we go by the following rule 96 percent lean or better processed meat is a category one 93 it will almost always say this on the package 93 to 95.9 percent .9 lean is a category four 
anything less than 93 should be a holiday unless you're eating out at a restaurant. If you're doing that at a restaurant, if you're eating really fatty, fatty processed meat at home and at restaurants, uh, we're really upside down. So when you're eating it at home, these are our lifestyle rules. When you eat it out, you just got to do it in the right combination. So example is going to McDonald's and having a quarter pounder throw their bread away, or you're going to store a lot of fat because that, that ground beef is not, even 93% lean. The, like if, if something says 85% lean, it, that sounds lean to people, but they're talking about by weight. They're not talking about by calories. So visualize a package of processed ground beef that's about yay size, a pound of beef. Did you know in 85% lean beef that only this part that I'm shading is lean protein. All of the rest of this space in that package is filler fat, the worst kind of fat coming from slaughterhouses everywhere, congealed, can buy not even one cow. Just a, but it's just disgusting. So we, when we purchase our processed meat, we want 96% lean. It looks more like this with less filler fat. But that, that's what you go by there. Okay, there now if they don't have that on the label, the math is always troublesome for me to teach and troublesome for the student because they share it when they don't really understand it and it causes problems. But if it doesn't say a percentile on the label, we look at the nutrition label. And what we're looking for ideally is 20% calories uh 20 percent calories from fat or less for category one and anything over that if it goes a little bit over that we can look at it but if it goes way over that that's the problem we're only talking about processed meat not the meat right off the bone we're talking about process where fat has been added to your franks and to your your ground beef ground turkey etc so how do we determine this if it's if it's not in big bold 96% lean or if it doesn't tell the leanness? How do we do that? So if it says it's got 200 calories, then it will say there's a certain amount of calories from fat right under that. And I always do check math to make sure. So if it says four ounces on the label, talking about the nutrition label, if it says four ounces to 200 calories, and then it's got 17 grams of fat, okay? How do I determine the calories from fat in that serving? Does anybody know? I've got 200 calories per serving. It doesn't tell me what the percentile of leanness is. I'm trying to solve the equation, and it says there's 17 grams of fat. Multiply by nine, good job, Sally. So here I've got 153 calories. So there was 200 calories in the serving and 153 of those calories are from fat. 153 out of the 200. If I take 153 and divide it by 200, I get, I get uh, the amount of, uh, I can determine the leanness of that product. And if it's not 20% calories from fat or less, like this is way over 50. So I already know unless I'm having a line or shark day, I'm not having this meat. This is going to have to, we're going to have to, if I got it on special, I'm going to have to save it for a holiday. Are y'all with me? It's not a good price. 76% fat. Right, Jennifer? Is that what you're saying? You did the math for me, I think. Hey, Patricia, multiply the total by... Uh, says nine times fat compared. I, I may not be following, but I think you got the gist of it, Patricia. Is everybody with me? You know how to, you look in the library. That's what I hope you'll do. But uh, if you don't want to make time to look in the library, knowing the math can help you in a, when you got to make a quick decision. Does that make sense? Any questions about that?
Oh, and I got to go back to the pintos and sweet potato. I don't think I answered that, did I? Pintos and sweet potato, uh, six plus three should not go together. I may have already said that. Any more questions about anything we just unpacked? I can have pintos and greens. I just can't have pintos and sweet potato. Jennifer, my mom tends to do that, but um, I, it, it's so fatty. I don't know how how in the world an 80-20 beef, that you're talking about almost everything you look at visually in that package is lard. So yeah, rinsing it off is not gonna help very much. I wished it would, you know, mom separates the, she puts a little water when she's uh, browning her ground beef and separates the, the fat. And, and certainly that brings it down a little bit, but not enough for us to trust. Let's, let's don't do that. Good thought though. Now I know, right? Right. So Jennifer says, I thought it was 80% beef. They're talking about, they're talking about by the weight of the product, not by the calories. Hence, you, you get that uh, they're wrong. You know, what weighs more, a pound of fat or a pound of muscle? They weigh the same. But where you hear a lot muscle weighs more than fat is that uh, a package that's mostly fat is not going to weigh as much as a package with mostly lean protein. So they, to trick the consumer, they'll put 90% lean. But that means by the weight of it, that 90% of it by weight is lean it doesn't mean by calories when we look at the calories which our body operates off of we see a whole different story so it is sneaky they're talking about by the weight not by calories there are four calories in a gram of protein but there are nine calories in a gram of fat so by default what would weigh what would weigh more uh a poor uh, a portion this big of steak or a portion this big of chicken the chicken we is because if it's the same portion you know same size the chicken's got more leanness to it more denseness oh protein uh for example another way to look at it is like a, this pound of fat, this is one pound of fat, how much space it takes up on the body. So one pound of muscle would only take up about this much space. It takes up, it weighs the same pound for pound, pounds a pound, but muscle takes up a lot less space on the body. So this much, this much muscle would weigh, what would weigh, some models show five pounds, it should be about twice as much. So one pound of muscle, uh, it's going to take up a lot less space. So you need about close to three pounds of muscle actually to equal this, this much space. Food's the same way. We are what we eat, kind of. Just did my first 36-hour fasting. I'm ready to eat. Go get it. Way to go. Congratulations. Thank you, Jennifer. Appreciate that so much. It's so good to have you. Everybody, please watch your fast track video videos. We will be having our noon session where it will be Q and A. Uh, the main thing I wanted to do in the eleven o'clock class is answer questions and reinforce the Shibola Shield. The right definition of drinking your water. The right definition of journaling. Food combinations to control insulin, portions, six to eight inch plate. Try to limit yourself to three eating episodes or less a day. You are allowed an approved snack and freebies on top of that if you have mental weakness. Then you got your timing. Try to spread your meals out four to six hours or have one huge 16 hour fast. And then just give thanks to God. If we Follow these definitions the right way. At the end of that day, we have hit the standard. We have had a perfect day, and we can rest assured that we're operating in a calorie deficit and that we're controlling insulin. We can rest assured. The definitions are the same for everybody. Now, 
the larger someone is, the quicker they're going to lose weight on the scales. Um, so you can't, comparison is the thief of joy. You don't want to compare yourself to somebody of a different age, gender, et cetera. Uh, situations are different. How do I journal fasting? If you did a Tiger 36, you just in your journal, you go to the drop down box and you click Tiger 36. Um, if, you're, if you don't have access to that, if you're not a lifetime member or a partner and don't have access to that, you just mark a perfect day. Uh, and you might want to, you know, write something in the description part of your journal about that you fasted so that if somebody ever looks back at that, like if you needed mentor help, uh, forgot that you fasted and they look and say, well, you didn't do your journal. So just write something in there that I fasted. Yeah, prunes are a category. How do I eat prunes? Prunes are a category five. So any way that you would eat any other category five with a one and a two or a seven and a two, and you'll be safe. You want to limit it, you know, a quarter cup would be best. Half a cup, you're getting to a maintenance level. Um, but have them with a one and two or a uh, seven and two. Hey, Patty. What are the minimum hours of fasting to log as intermittent fasting? The minimum is 12 hours. We're, we don't consider ourselves in a fasted state until we've hit 12 hours with zero calories, including sleep. So 12 is the minimum. That's when the uh, autophagy, that phenomenon of autophagy, begins to turn on. Now, you're not getting a lot of benefit from it until you hit 16 hours. Uh, but 12 hours is when, it, when the good things begin to happen. Anybody else? Amen, Patty. Right on. Don't compare your progress with someone else. That's right. It's all fair, by the way. The process is fair. You know, I, I hear frequently, as you can imagine, it's not fair. So-and-so lost seven pounds in a week and I lost two. Well, even if y'all did the very same thing, that person weighs more than you or has less uh, lean living tissue or there's always something going on there. You can't do that. What we look at and compare ourselves to is the, the weekly timing chart, you know. How, am I having perfect days? If you stay at six or less, you can expect to lose body fat efficiently. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what underlying disease that you, you're dealing with. It's, it's just you against your own mind at this point. Can you overdrink water? You certainly can. You can, you can uh, overhydrate. Need to speak with your physician if you have underlying disease, kidney issues or liver issues or heart issues. Need to discuss with your doctor. Uh, drinking too much water will be extremely difficult to do, but it can be done depending on your, your underlying health issues. So you need to talk to your physician about what's right for you. I give a very safe amount that keeps everybody safe. And that's a minimum of a half a gallon of water a day, uh, up to one gallon. Uh, as long as you're not dehydrated and don't uh, guzzle a gallon as hard and as fast as you can chug it while you've already dehydrated yourself and your heart, <clears throat> you're probably not gonna have a problem. What is the best first meal after a 16 hour fast? I'd like to say for our lifestyle people, the one you'd enjoy uh, that's approved, whatever meal you'd enjoy. Because if we'll remember that if we're going to be doing this for a lifetime, if we don't do this for a lifetime, we're wasting our time. We're going to gain our weight back. So if I've decided on having a perfect day after wrapping up a long fast, any meal that I will enjoy uh, as, as negative as, as the better, the more negative the number that I would enjoy would be the meal I'd want to make my comeback with. So well, we rate stuff minus one, minus two, minus three, minus three being the best. 
So uh, you're going to get most of those from the red column or yellow column. So whichever ones of those meals you would enjoy the best would be my advice. Are there always going to be, oh, this is better than that one for weight loss? There's always going to be that. There's no way that, I mean, you ever heard that old saying, probably bad analogy, you can think you're big and tough, but there's always somebody out there tougher. And it's so true. Well, it works the same way with food. There's always something we could do a little better. Uh, but I'm in this for the long haul. It's not about getting to a result and quitting. So for me, it's what is the best for my metabolism and my goals that I will enjoy. I don't eat things I don't enjoy. Hope that makes sense. So any red or yellow column. Amanda, if we fast 12 hours in the eating window, still eight? No, <clears throat> then you got 12 hour eating window. So there's 24 hours in a day. And if I'm on fast for 12 hours, I have a 12 hour eating window. Is it better to eat a mighty muffin by itself or make like pancakes with egg whites with sugar-free syrup? Same thing, uh, same way I answered uh, Jessica. It, whichever those you enjoy the most is going to be fine. Both of those are, there's not, you did, we would be splitting hairs to discuss the pros and the cons of those two options that you threw there. A mighty muffin and then approved pancakes with egg whites are gonna be very similar in their makeup. So whichever one of those you enjoy the most will be the best. You're gonna get similar weight loss from either. I know we don't go by calories. Hey, Karen, I know we don't go by calories, but did you say in the past that she both is about? No, uh, I didn't say that. It does work out that way for many people because we have females of similar height. So um, you, what you want to do there, Karen, is what is your ideal weight? Okay. Do you, if you don't want to tell us, you don't have to. Do you want me to, do you want me to solve it for you? If you, do you mind giving me your ideal weight? What would be your utopia weight? In your mind, you hear the Brian Adams song, Heaven. We're in heaven now. We reach the goal weight. We, 145. So your optimal calories for the day would be, what was that, 145? 145 times eight. Okay. So for you, that would be optimal. You need to, you need to stay under. 1160 calories a day you need to stay under 1160 calories a day for fast fat loss for fast fat loss and that's what everybody wants to know so for fast and healthy fat loss you follow the shield and stay at 1160 calories or less now we ask that you try not to go below 7,000 calories in a week no matter who you are if you're having perfect days you're providing enough protein that way so we're not worried about that now ding 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 when you reach this goal you've now you've gotten there now you've Karen I think it was Karen now you've got there you're at 145 so now we take this times 10 for maintenance and your maintenance level of calories would be 1450 or less a day, and you'll easily maintain for life. Does that make sense? Does that help some? I know I need to bail. It's getting it's getting raucous in here. Uh, no, kettle and fire, all kettle and fire are not category four. They have you got to keep this in mind with your brand names. Just because it's kettle and fire doesn't mean that it's one category. So kettle and fire has both category four products and category one products. We prefer their category one products. Melissa, protein powder egg whites with almond butter is what some bodybuilders do. Could you briefly explain why this is not good? Mm, I don't think I said it wasn't good. 
I don't think I've ever said that. So you've got protein powders, a category one, if it's approved. Egg whites is a category one. Almond butters is a category six. Can you have a category one and six together, everyone? Yeah, yeah, one and six are fine. So now if I misunderstood something, somebody say it in rapid fire session, but I doubt, I don't think I ever said that. If I did, throw it out there and we'll, we'll unpack it because I do make mistakes. If you're asking why bodybuilders do that, I really, they're just trying to get in extra protein the almond butter really serves them no purpose other than to increase the taste because it doesn't have enough protein for a bodybuilder to get excited over. Protein powder and egg whites is where they're getting their protein and they have to eat a surplus of calories. That's another thing. When we're all looking in these magazines, when we're all looking in these magazines uh, at these beautiful women, these beautiful men that are bodybuilders or whatnot, You've, you don't understand that they're having to eat in a calorie surplus to put on muscle. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to preserve muscle while in a calorie deficit. Totally different uh, goals. Make sense, everybody? What is so good about Egg Whites International? I'm weird. So... They're double pasteurized. I know you can get double pasteurized eggs uh, elsewhere, but the thought of drinking, uh, I've visited that place. I know the folks that run it. I believe in their product. I believe in the quality of their product, the cleanliness of their facilities. And I love to drink raw egg whites. I love to use it as a base for my protein shake. It makes the best tasting shake. Uh, there's nothing, no filler, nothing, no junk added to their product, just a clean product. And if you're not going to be cooking them, uh, you're going to be drinking them raw, then you want to make sure quality control is in place. Now, I know we can go to the grocery store and get double pasteurized egg whites and should, uh, should be fine. But when it comes to something where people could get sick and I'm going to put my endorsement on it, I want it to be on a product that I believe in the integrity of their business, their, their product, the cleanliness of their facilities, et cetera. That's just my take on it. Nothing, they're better than egg beaters. Egg beaters has food color and it tastes terrible. Um, but, uh, you know, Egg Whites International is a good one. I'm sure there are other good ones too. When it comes to stuff like that, I try to find one or two brands I like, like Beverly and Advocare. And it just, you know, it just keeps things simple for me. And then I let everybody else make their decisions, um, you know, based upon their budget and what feels right for them. Is fat okay by itself while fasting, like MCT? It is not. If you're fasting, protein and fat and carbohydrate disrupt the benefits of autophagy. So we do not want to consume uh any macronutrient uh, while we're fasting. We want to keep things at zero calories. If we are going to have calories, just negligible amounts of calories. A little caffeine probably doesn't hurt much, but when you add fat or protein, you're, you're disrupting the benefits of autophagy. Therefore, uh, there's no reason to be fasting unless it's, you're doing a spiritual fast. Anybody else? How should I come out of a longer multi-day fast? Multi-day fast. Um, in the same way I answered earlier. So you've got tons of variety. So when you get done with that fast, what's your mood? Are you feeling great? Do you want to keep going, uh, trying to reach that goal? Then maybe a red column or yellow column meal that day. Uh, three or less meals. Uh, I usually do two meals a day now, but uh, three, three or less would be fine. Red column, yellow column is going to keep that metabolism. It's going to get that metabolism fired up again. 
We don't want to offset the benefits of a fast with a bunch of junk food as a reward for uh, achieving our fast. Uh, we want to go to, we got momentum, we've established momentum, and the best weight loss meal that you will enjoy is the way you come out of a multi-day fast. You're probably not going to be able to eat as much after a long fast because your stomach has shrunk some. Use that to your advantage too, to, to overcome the desire to need to feel filled. Nick, you didn't hear me right. Did I hear you correctly on the 7,000 calories a week? Well, you may have. I'm saying no one should go below 7,000 calories a week. Uh, one week of that can be a beautiful, healthy thing. Very few people should be getting nervous about this. If you could do it for a month, if you're only having 5,000 calories, our problem is not that we eat too little, it's that we eat too much. So uh, if you did that for a few weeks, it would probably provide great benefit. But if you do that as a lifestyle strategy, below 7,000 calories every week, you're going to begin to sacrifice muscle because once you lose all of your excess fat, that's where the body will take care of first is the excess fat. Good thing there. But then your body starts resisting that uh, when you get down to the lower, lower essential fat numbers, uh, or excuse me, your essential fat and lower reserve fat numbers. That's not good to be under 7,000 calories in a week when you've gotten rid of all your excess fat. Misty, last question. I got to go to the 12 o'clock class, but I'll be there to continue any discussion y'all want to continue. Uh, Misty, can I use Plexus Slim while fasting? You may. Yeah. Protein is okay as far as digestion. Yes, protein uh, digests well. The body is uh, well adept, if I'm understanding you right, on breaking down protein and, and digesting it. I may, may not be understanding you. Yeah, protein after your fast. Okay, yeah. Protein after your fast is a beautiful thing. Uh, protein more than the other macros will get your metabolism sped back up. All right, I'm headed to the next class. Hope to see some of you over there at noon. Thanks for attending today. Don't forget, we need partners. Uh, we really, we begging, we begging www.helpshaboleth.com www.helpshaboleth.com